Is this going to be one of those situations where the American consumer can continue to power the U.S. economy and retail will be a key theme in 2020? Absolutely. So obviously the consumer is the most important driver of um, of growth here going forward. And I think as Courtney said, you know, it's very much still about the winners and the losers. We saw the big guys, Best Buy, Walmart, Target continue to gain share and strength and power, um, you know, not only in the wallet of the consumers, but also in the supply chain. So I think those will continue to be winners. And of course, I think another big theme for 2020 is that, you know, you're starting to hear about, for example, Nike say, hey, Amazon, no, we're pushing back. And I think more brands will start to control their distribution and continue to try to clean up that promotional environment out there. Not everybody will be successful in that, but I think Nike will be a standout here with not only top line growth, but margin growth as a result. We've often talked, Stacey, about this idea that there's been a barbell in retail with regard to the companies that do well. It's the very high end and it's the very bargain basement kind of, you know, discount shopping side of things. How exactly do you fare and how do you position as an investor knowing that those are the two markets that are really doing well with this great middle that's kind of middling about? Sure. And I and I think, of course, you know, you've had um, the the higher end brands like Lululemon doing incredibly well here and will continue to in 2020. But I would also point out not everybody in the middle is struggling. So, you know, you, you look at Walmart, you look at Target, um, some of the best performers out there. So not everybody in the middle is struggling. Who's really struggling in the middle is department store spaces and, you know, the likes of Kohl's who just really haven't innovated in terms of the experience in the stores and that's the real problem here so i think there are winners in each segment and the winners that we've seen are the ones that are controlling their destiny and speaking to the consumer in the right way so chad i, I want to bring you back into this this discussion you mentioned walmart as one of your key companies to watch for the consumer side of things are there other brands out there that really have you excited or are you kind of playing a wait and see mode with regard to the types of companies and stocks that you would want to go into from a consumer discretionary perspective so what we would do and we recommend is to actually invest and lean into the consumption pattern from the perspective of the health of the consumer is quite robust. Uh, they have already delevered their balance sheet. Credit growth on the household side is growing between three and four percent. So we are quite optimistic going into 2020 into 2021. Uh, so the Walmarts of the world, Costco's, for example, that overall thematic mm. of consumption, we continue to we think will continue to power through as well. Look at companies and other tangential industries that will benefit from this consumption pattern, as well as wage growth being quite robust. All right. I mean, Stacy, wage growth is obviously a huge concern for a lot of folks out there. Wages are growing, albeit modestly. Let's talk about whether or not the U.S. consumer, there's been a lot of talk about whether or not they can weather the tariffs that have been put into place that are now maybe gradually being rolled back. Is this now the time when the American consumer can afford to pay higher prices to help further some of the trade goals of the Trump administration? Well, I think the good news is that you know, we're not really seeing those price increases. And even when the tariff conversation was at its height and its biggest fear, we still didn't see huge price increases go through. So I think now that some of that conversation is abating and, and you know, we're having a different conversation into 2020, um, some of the stocks that have been really pressured, like a Dollar Tree, um, you know, maybe come back a little bit because the, as Courtney talked about, the supply chain here, the, the big retailers are pushing back those costs to the supply chain and they're having to take it on. So, again, the bigger you are in retail, the better because you have that, that power to push back. So that's how I would play it. All right, Stacey, how about the ways that we talk about themes in re-commerce? This idea, Courtney also brought up this idea that many companies may look towards secondhand markets, consignment, used goods. Do you think that's going to be a big thing to watch in 2020, or is it just a passing fad? 
I think it's going to be huge. I think this will be the story of 2020 and beyond. If you think about the resale and the rental market and how many players are getting into it here, I think it could represent as much as 20% of the business or take away 20% from the, the, the sale retail business here, and that's huge. But the good news is some of the most unproductive inventory that kind of flops, the fashion forward inventory that doesn't sell well, those are sometimes the best renters out there. So this is a way for brands to actually use their inventory that hasn't been successful in the direct sale market. So it works for everybody. It's, it's profitable for the brands and it helps them um, get more information about their consumer because it's an ongoing relationship rather than just a one-time sale.